today we're going to talk about how to do page breaks and section numbering. And we're going to use a children's book as an example, but this will be the same whether you do a children's book or adult book or any other kind of book. And for this example, I'm showing a book by Curtis K. Corey. He writes a variety of delightful children's stories, so I highly recommend taking a look for his fairy stories and Bigfoot stories and all sorts of other kinds of stuff. All right, so we have a book here. I have it set up in a Word, and it's in a side-by-side -side format so that the pages are shown side-by-side. -side. And right now, there are no page numbers at all in this book. And for children's book, it's you know about 50-50 whether you have pages or not. In this kind of a book, you generally do. If it's a full bleed story where the whole thing is graphic images, then often you don't have page numbers, but we're going to put page numbers into this one. Page numbers generally are either at the top or the bottom. And for children's books, they are usually bottom center. For adult books, they are sometimes on you know, the left-hand side and the right-hand side and that sort of thing. But we're just going to put them in the center here so we show you the very basics of how this all works. Okay, so we're looking at this with the Pilcrow option turned on. So if you look in your top word bar, then you will see a thing that looks like a backwards P. If you click it, they turn on. If you click it, they turn off. So it's just a toggle on and off. I always, always work with the Pilcrow turned on so I can see where all the spacing is. These things are paragraphs, that's a page break, so you can see that everything is being laid out properly. And once you get used to working it with on, it makes it everything so much easier to know how you are laying out things and how you are working on your project. So I've got the Pilcrows on, you can see all of their different marks, and I'm going to click down here in the bottom and poof, it shows me that there's a footer down there. So you don't have to do anything at all special to get to your headers or footers. So here I'll click back in the center. We're in the normal mode. If I want to get to the header, then I just click in the top area and it shows that this is the header area and I can do header stuff. And you just click back in the center again to get out of that. All right, so we're just gonna click in the bottom on any page to get to the footer area. So I had said that we want to do footers that are centered and that have a page number in them. So I'm going to go to the Home tab, is the way that I generally tend to do this. And one of the set, sets of information on your Home tab is what the alignment of what you're working on is going to be. So I'm going to click on Center. So you see my thing has centered down here. And then to put in the page number, that's a special feature for header and footer. So one, since I'm in the footer right now, you can see that I'm in the footer area. One of the sections you get while you're in the footer area is this header and footer option. So I'll click on the header and footer option. And over on the left, you have the values for the header and the values for the footer. And then you have a special page number because that's <laughs> what most of the time you're trying to do if you've got a header or footer is work with your page number. So I'm going to click on page number. I'm going to say I want it at the current position. And I just want something simple. So that's all you do. You click on page number, you say that you want a simple page number, and you can see that this knows it's on page 5, so let's put a 5 there. It knows it's on page 6, so let's put a 6. So we can select this little thing now, and we could say that we actually want it to be times, and we actually want it to be, let's say, 14 point, you know, just make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. So we've got, if we scroll back up to the front, we've got page 1, 2, three, four, five, six, nicely at the center of every page. So that is quite perfect. So it's perfect in the sense <laughs> that we've got page numbers on there. And I'll, I'll click on off of the uh, footer area. So we're, we're back into regular document mode and it just shows these numbers showing up as if by magic on every page. So we have achieved the value of putting in our page numbers at the bottom of every page. However, as you probably know, you don't normally label the title page of your book with a page one or the copyright page or the intertitle. You normally only start labeling your book at the start of its actual content, so where the person starts reading the story, and you pretty much never label the first page, this would be called page one, with a one. You always label starting from page two and going onward from page two. So this is where people get confused about how to do this sort of thing. You know, this is physically page five in the book, but in terms of numbering, we want this to be page one and to not have a one on it 
and we want this to be page two and to have a two on it. And then this one would be page three and page four and so on. So how do we do that? We do that with sections. In Word, you can split your book up into different sections and each section can have its own page numbering scheme. So let's start by clicking somewhere in the middle of page one. So this is physically page five, but in terms of our numbering, this is going to be page one because it's the first page with actual story content on it. So if we click in there and then we go, see, I always forget. Is it an insert or design layout? Layout. So layout breaks, we're going to do a continuous section break. So it's under the layout section, continuous section break. So we're going to click on that and you will see, I'll click so you can see it better. So now we have put in a continuous section break in the middle of page one. So that means that this stuff up over here is part of section one of our story. And then this part down here after that section break is part of section two of the story. And each of these has its own set of page numbers. So we can determine that by, we're on here, let's go down here. So we're definitely on page seven, so we're deep into section two now. I'm going to click down here into the footer area and you can see that it says this is the footer of section two. If we scroll up a little, this stuff up here is the footer of section one. So now we do have two sections in our document, one section leading up to the main content area and then the second section, section two, which contains all of the main content area. All right, so I'm in the footer of section two over here and it happens to be physical page seven. If we look up in our menu bar, you can see that this section is linked to the previous section. That link to previous is highlighted. We want to unlink it so these sections have completely separate page number areas. So I'm going to unclick the link to previous and then I'm going to click on the main content to get out of the header and footer area. So now I am back to normal document mode and I had chosen to unlink them. So now if I go back into the footer over here, you can see that it is no longer linked to the previous section. It is a wholly separate section in terms of the page numbers. So we have one set of page numbers for section two and one set of page numbers for section one. So what this means is now that they are unlinked from each other. If I click down here on page one, so I'm on the very first page, the very first page of the entire book, and I click down into the footer area for the very first page, it's not linked to anything. And if I now select that page number and then hit the delete button to delete it, so I have deleted the page number out of the footer for section one. And I'm going to click just on the regular document to get out of it. We no longer have a page number in the footer of section one because I hit the delete button with it. But we will scroll down and you can see that I do still have a page number in the bottom of section two because those are now considered two separate sections in terms of the page number. So there are no page numbers in the first pages, which is what we want. And then once we get down into the content, there are pages in the second section. So that part is good, but we still have the remaining problem that the page number shown is of the physical page. This is physically page seven when someone is paging through. But in terms of how books get numbered, this is only page three, because this is counted as page one where the story starts page two, page three, and so on. All right, so we're gonna click down here into the footer area to get back to the footer content. So we're looking at the footer for section two. If we go up into our page number option in the top left, so I'm gonna click on page number, and I'm going to now say I wanna format these page numbers that I've got. So I've clicked on format page numbers and our options are to continue from the previous section, which is why it knows that this is now page seven because it's counting from the first section. But instead, we are going to start at a value and we will start at number one. So I'm going to click on OK. So right here, I'll click in the middle so that you can see what's going on. So we're back to the regular view. So there's nothing on the first page 
because this has a section break in the middle of it. So this is um, sort of considered part of section one still over here. So there's no value on the first page, but there is a value of a two on the second page. And there's a value of three on the third page and four on the fourth page, five on the fifth page and so on throughout the entire book. So this is the way that books are traditionally numbered. There is no page number on the first page of content, but is considered page one. There is a page number on page two, page three, page four, and so on through the rest of the book. And one generally does not ever number the title page or the copyright page or all of these introductory pages. And there are a few exceptions if you have uh, prologues and that kind of stuff, but we won't get into any of the complicated things right now. This is just about the basics. So again, the basics are if you have a book and you want to add page numbers that generally you want to put a section break on the first page of content to break your book into two separate sections. You want to go into the footer of the second area. You want to add page numbers to it and you want to separate these page numbers from the page numbers from the first section. So they're two entirely separate entities. And once you do that, you're able to delete the page numbers out of the first section without affecting at all the page numbers in the second section. And then you're able to instruct the page numbers in the second section to start fresh with page one, two, three, and so on. So hopefully I explained that in enough detail that you get how this works. Let me know if you have any questions at all about how to implement this. And let me know if you have any other topics you want me to cover. So thank you very much, and I hope you have success with your book projects.